Hi, Debbie. Just between us girls, I wanted to take uh, a minute here. Really, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Marcia McDowell. I sent my sis home months ago. I, uh, I rotated in just after you made that obscene comment, as loud as you could, uh, to embarrass my sis. She was probably one of the only friends that you've ever had, but I told her when we were in Zurich, she didn't have to put up with that, not from you, not from anybody. So I sent her back home to Toronto with her girlfriend, and I rotated in. You didn't notice, did you? Not until I changed my hair back to where it's supposed to be, so that I wouldn't have to be wearing long hair like my sis has. But you didn't even notice then. I bet you didn't. <laughs> uh, we've been switching in and out for a couple of years now. I've been switching in for her, she's been switching in for me. Reason was, when I was gathering intel for John, he knew, he knew I'd be the perfect one to make sure that his boy was okay. After all, he, everybody in Majestic, knows that I've loved him for two decades. Yeah, I grew my hair long. I put on about 30 pounds. And uh, nobody could tell us apart. <laughs> then uh, I broke my arm. Funny. Funny how fate works, isn't it? But that's what it took. That's what it took to get me a real good close-up look inside the operation you had running. The one where you had him prisoner. The one where you were doing everything in your power to get rid of him. Yeah, that's the man I quietly loved for 20 years, and I watched you let him rot. What did you give him to sleep on? A couple of blankets, filthy bedroll. Yeah, you just laid the blankets down on the floor and made him sleep on the floor. You never bothered to wash them, did you? Hardly. Every couple, three, four months, maybe you throw them in the laundry. It got so bad, it stunk got so bad there were fleas in there. He was bitten all over his whole body once. Yeah, thanks to you. You didn't wash the damn things. And you couldn't care less, could you? You just couldn't care less. You let his teeth rot. Yeah, I know, I know that. You let his teeth rot out so bad that there was nothing but black holes in some spots. It went right down into his jaw right past the gum line, all the way down into his jaw, and you wouldn't take him to a dentist. You just let him live in pain and torment and torture, just until he couldn't stand it anymore. And you know what he did? He packed it. He packed those holes in his jaw by himself, because you wouldn't take him to a dentist. He used a Dremel tool to try to do his own dentistry. Do you know how much that hurts? Oh, no, you wouldn't care, would you? Yeah, never cared much, unless it happened to you. You didn't give a damn. He was desperate, but he loves those girls. Loves the two littlest ones, for sure. But hey, you couldn't be bothered. Of course you couldn't be bothered. You were too busy taking out all six of the family to buffets every time you turned around. You didn't have enough money to get his teeth fixed because you were spending it trying to look good, trying to look important. Yeah. So then a seizure started happening, more often and more often. Yeah. And it took him longer and longer to recover. And that got him worse and worse. So every time I turned around, Dan was having another seizure. He was stuck in, stuck in his poor bedroll, sleeping on the floor again. Could barely move, could barely get up. Finally, the doctor said he was gonna die, didn't he? I remember what the doctor said. You told me yourself. So did he. What was he going to die from? Respiratory arrest? Jay and I, Jay and I both knew that it was time to act. We didn't have any time left. So we looked over the tapes. Yeah, we looked over the tapes, all right. And we found a place where he didn't agree to uh, sign himself and swear himself back in. Well, you wanted him to swear into a completely different group. Yeah, sweet little illuminist girl, you. 
you knew you weren't going to get any money if you didn't swear. So I guess you figured, hey, I've got to get money somehow. You remembered all of those insurance policies you signed his name to. Yes, I've seen those too. So I guess that started to look pretty good to you since he wasn't going to play ball, was he? Yeah, your little campaign was supposed to work great. Uh, somebody once called it your RX solution. Yeah. Why do you think I cooked so often when I was over at your place, huh? I wanted to get into that kitchen because I wanted to see, I needed to know where you were storing those boo-boo bags. Yeah, those boo-boo bags you mixed up for him. The ones that you kept feeding to him. Yeah, after he had the seizures when he didn't know what he was taking because he was so, so, uh, because he was after seizures and he was so sick. He couldn't tell up from down. He couldn't tell up from down. He didn't know what he was taking. So you just kept feeding that stuff to him as best you could. And get that into him. Yeah. Great plan. Couldn't miss. Right? No way it would look like you. Yeah. At first we figured it was just neglect and a negligence on your part. But then, then we realized that you were helping it along. Yeah. It was time to step in. We were not going to allow this to happen.